Hi, Friday, uh, 1st of July, 2016. Uh, Monaco 64 here, home of uh, alternative uh, economics and uh, contrarian views. Uh, this is a gold and silver and Bitcoin update. Uh, I'm going to talk about the technical picture uh, for the precious metals and Bitcoin and also a little bit about the fundamentals behind the, the moves we've seen. I made a, a video a couple of days ago, uh, it was Wednesday morning and silver is breaking out through 18 and that looked really positive and uh, silver has continued and uh, today uh, we broke through 19. We went very quickly through the uh, 1850 uh, level, which was the high from January 2015. Uh, the next target, I think, uh, is 2150, which is the high from July 2014. And uh, as you can see here now, uh, this uh, weekly silver chart going back to 2011 when we had the high of just under 50 at 49.75 roughly and then uh, if you take the low from December 2015 at uh, 13.65 the uh, first big uh, important Fibonacci retracement is the 38.2 percent retracement or the golden mean uh, and that's at $27.37. So we're far away from, from that level, but silver can move very quickly, as you've seen the last few days. So, you know, um, it's impossible to say, I guess, when we're going to get there. But uh, so that's, that's the picture, picture for silver. Looks very positive. Uh, right now, as I speak, it's uh, 5.30 uh, London time, 5.30 p.m., 12.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, or 12.30 in New York. And silver is at 19.45. The high has been 19.56. So doing quite well, silver, uh, today. And uh, Monday, of course, in the U.S. is, uh, is a holiday, 4th of July, so... Uh, Comex will be closed, but the rest of the world will be open and uh, gold and silver will trade. Um, so gold now, looking at gold, um, gold's doing very well as well. We haven't broken through uh, the post-Brexit uh, June 24th high, but we're trading uh, quite constructively right now. Um, Gold's trading, let's see, 13.36, up $14 for the day. The high's been 13.42. So doing quite well. Um, in terms of technicals, um, yeah, there isn't, you know, uh, much resistance until the uh, 13.80 level now. That's a key, key level. Uh, just like the uh, silver, uh, that's the 38.2% retracement from the September 2011 high of 1921 and the December low at 1046. That's 1380. Uh, and now, as you can see here uh, from this chart, I've drawn a trend line all the way to the top uh, in September 2011 to a top in 2012 around 800, just below 800. And that line is actually was breached last week post-Brexit and we're very close to breaking through that line. So that also looks pretty good, that, tr that the fact that that trend line um, is actually almost ready to be broken and I think it will be broken. In terms of uh, after the 1380, uh, I think that uh, we, we might find a bit of uh, range trading between 1380 and 1430. 1430 was a, a high uh, in 2013, like after the big, uh, big collapse we had uh, that year. Uh, gold uh, rebounded from below 1200 to 1430. So I'd expect 1380 to 1430 there, uh, resistance. So, uh, yeah, all the precious metals looking pretty good. The mining shares are looking good, too. Uh, and now we move to Bitcoin.
Bitcoin uh, has been volatile, of course. Last week, we dropped uh, all the way below 600. And right now, we're fairly strong, 675. Uh, one has to, you know, admit that Bitcoin moved very quickly, you know, from around 450 all the way, you know, above 700 in a matter of, well, it was like three weeks or yeah, three weeks. It was really quick. And uh, all I think happened last week is that we uh, closed a, a gap here from uh, the end of uh, end of May, as you can see by this chart, we closed the gap. So that's positive. And uh, I think the uh, the trend and the technicals still look good for uh, Bitcoin as well. And uh, in terms of fundamentals, uh, especially for the precious metals, um, I think one of the major impacts uh, after the Brexit uh, result, and uh, it's just a trigger, I'm not saying Brexit caused it because it was happening before, is the fact that uh, government bonds, especially in the uh, developed world, are sinking even quicker because there's a realization uh, that uh, the economies are slow and there's going to be, you know, uh, and that central banks are going to keep uh, policy uh, accommodative and rates near zero. So I'm reading here uh, a comment uh, in the uh, FT from uh, Julian, Jillian Tett. She's a good writer. And uh, I know some of you might say I slagged off the FT the other day. But as Sun Tzu once said, you need to know yourself and your enemy. And sometimes, you know, you need to read um, the FT, even though I think it's a lot of it is uh, rubbish. But they do write some interesting things. And Jillian Tett is actually a good writer, in my opinion. And she's actually talking about this. Now watch the shift in interest rates. And uh, she says, and I quote, future historians may conclude this is one of the most important ripple effects of the referendum. And that is the shift into, you know, the shift downward in interest rates. Today, 10-year, uh, uh, U.S. 10-year notes and 30-year notes reached uh, new yields, all-time lows. Uh, U.K. two-year gilts yesterday had a, ne a slightly negative yield. That's the first time ever. And that's unusual because you would have thought uh, in a sterling crisis that, uh, government bond yields in the UK would go up, but they're actually going down. And uh, Mark Carney of the Bank of England uh, yesterday, he spoke yesterday and said he, you know, they're going to continue to, they're going to, you know, shift into lower, uh, more accommodation and the, and the market's taking that as more QE probably and a rate cut because the BOE uh, rate is 0.5. So they could cut a little bit. And uh, the other thing Julian Tett note, uh, notes, and, uh, and I, I quote, she says, to understand this, take a look at the numbers. A couple of years ago, negative yielding bonds, which in nominal terms pay less at maturity than investors initially paid, were rare. But this week, the Fitch Ratings Agency calculated that there is now $11.7 trillion dollars worth of sovereign debt in the global market that carries negative nominal interest rates. And she continues, that is extraordinary. Furthermore, this pile has swelled by $1.3 trillion in the past month alone and includes $2.6 trillion of longer-term longer bonds, those with more than seven years maturity. Meanwhile, the pile of bonds with a yield that investors used to consider normal or above 2% is barely worth $2 trillion now. So, yeah, she goes on to say, you know, that that's going to hurt uh, investors, asset managers. It's going to hurt insurance companies. And it could be like a vicious circle where uh, these companies, uh, you know, will have to try to get uh, returns from riskier investments. You know, that's why the stock market is, is rebounded, in my opinion. But at the same time, 
we are in uncharted uh, waters because we've never seen negative uh, interest rates before like this. The only other time was in the early 70s when the Swiss had to impose negative interest rates when, uh, you know, with the collapse of Bretton Woods, everyone was going towards the Swiss franc, and, but that was a one-off. This is the whole developed world. And the reason I'm talking about this after talking about the technicals in gold and silver is that this is what is driving the precious metals because they become high-yielding uh, assets even though they don't yield anything in a world of negative interest rates because you can hold gold and silver and it's zero interest rate, but that's better than negative. So that's why we're seeing gold and silver do well and I think they will continue to do well. As for the consequence of these negative uh, uh, interest rates, it's going to be a lot higher government bond prices. Um, as I said, we've never seen this before. And as Bill Gross, the bond guru, said a few weeks ago, he thinks, you know, it's create this policy is creating a bond supernova. I don't know how it's going to end because we've never seen it before, but it, I don't think it will be a, a good ending. So uh, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed my uh, technical analysis and the fundamental un underpinning behind it. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.